Hello everybody, it is a little bit past the mid-year 2023 and I thought I would share some changes I made to my planner system with you. I haven't changed my system in a really long time, uh, so this is all kind of new for me. I don't usually get antsy at the mid-year, but this year things have been shifting and I thought a shift in the planners um, would make sense. So let me take you through them, largest to smallest. This is the A5 plotter. I bought this after I was gifted the uh, narrow size and completely fell in love with it. So this is the A5 and I'm using this for a goal planner. I have tried several goal planners. I used to use the Franklin Covey planners, which aren't really goal planners, but like they have that really organized ABC priority system that I really liked. But this is more for longer term goals, less of a to-do list. So um, I tried the Cultivate What Matters Power Sheets planner. I've tried the um, the full focus planner. There were elements of those that I liked, but the full focus planner, pardon all the animal noises, by the way, the full focus planner is like a, like a planner planner. Like it's got hourly daily. I'm like, I don't need daily hourly planning. And then the cultivate what matters planner was more along the lines of what I wanted, but I didn't like the giant ring bound. It's just, it's too much. And like, it's, it's, it's it's all about cultivating an entire life and I, I don't have the brain power to focus on cultivating an entire life. I just want to cultivate, you know, little things towards bigger goals. So the, the Cultivate What Matters felt a little bit overwhelming for me. Like it's a very pretty planner, but it wasn't for me. But I thought about all the goal planners that I've used and that I've liked and that I've tried and designed one of my own. So here's the welcome page. This is just a list of agents that I want to query. Um... Quotes, you know, I, I made my very own opening stuff, things about smarter goals. And then I'm not going to share my goals with you because those are private. Um, but I, I have, I actually don't have a picture of the goal. Well, let me share one that's not. Okay, so here's one. So this is very similar to some of the other planners. And again, I'm not selling this. I'm like, I'm using it for my own personal thing. I have borrowed stuff from other, um, other planners. So yes, if you see things that are familiar, that's not coincidental. Um, so I've got a goal statement. This goal supports what parts of me, here are my key motivations. Here's what I'll need to succeed. Here's when I want to finish. And then the back of each page has breaking it down into smaller chunks how I'll celebrate completing it and the year end, you know, did I reach it? And if not, what do I do next? So that's the goal pages. And then for each month, I have, we're going to start in here. This month is, so whatever the month is, here are my to do's, things I'm excited for, what's on my mind, things I'm saying no and yes to, just to kind of get like that overview of the month. Then the things I'm focused on in the month and every week, things I'm committed to doing. And then each week I start with saying, what are my big three? What am I gonna focus on? And then I can come back and fill in the percentage that I got done. I have an affirmation every week. And then that's that's the entire beginning of the week. I do that every Monday, which actually today's Monday, so I should do that soon. Then I come back at the end of the week and do my review. So how did I feel on a scale of one to 10? What were my wins, my challenges, what worked, what didn't, and what can I do to make next week great? So that's that. And then at the end, there's the month in review. So what went well? What didn't go well? Where am I making progress? Is there anything I want to shift? What am I grateful for? What's my favorite thing to remember about the month? And then at the end of the year, well, at the end of the quarter, I'll do a quarterly review and refresh. And, you know, how did I feel about everything? And then I've got the goal refresh. So, you know, how am I doing on my goals at the end of the quarter? Do I want to change anything? And then my year in review is here. So once I get to the end of the year, I'll do that. And then, you know, superlative. So favorite memory, best thing, best new habit, biggest change, stuff like that. So that's my goal planner that I designed and that I'm using, which I think is, it's working really well so far. I find it's really, really helpful. Um, and then my actual planner I guess I lied. I guess I won't take you largest to smallest. My actual planner is now in here. Uh, planner used to be in here, and I was using weekly and monthly inserts. 
And I just, I, I really don't need all the space in the weekly inserts. They were just becoming to-do lists and I wasn't really doing a whole lot of decorating. It just felt like a lot to keep up with. Like I, I feel like it was a lot of space to fill up. And then if I did fill it up, it felt cluttered. <laughs> so yeah, and I didn't need that much space for to-do lists. And now that my family is a little more, um, we're keeping much better track of our sort of family calendar and scheduling stuff because we never did. And then we would run into like, oh, I didn't know you were doing that. And like, because we tell each other stuff and then we forget. So that wasn't working for us. So we're keeping more of a big calendar in the hallway with all of us. And then I keep a smaller calendar. And, and my thought was what I wanted. I thought, you know, I don't need all of the space in a weekly insert. So maybe I can just pare down to the monthly insert. But then if I'm in the monthly insert in a traveler's notebook, how am I going to have a to-do list? Because some months, or rather some weeks rather, I only have like one or two to-dos and other weeks I fill up the entire, you know, sheet with them. So how can I get a to-do list into a monthly insert? Like I'd have to tip it in somehow, but I don't want to deal with washi tape and I don't want to deal with it blocking the page. And then, you know, because I like to see my spread all in one go. And then I thought, well, I've got a ring planner. What if I have a running to-do list and the ring planner right at the front where I can see it and then I can just do monthly pages, keep track of stuff in the monthly, and then my to-do list is separate but still right there and I can kind of move things around if and as I need to. So why don't I try that? Okay, I thought, so let's do that. So here's what I did. So here's the inside of my plotter narrow. This is my to-do list. And then... Let me show you a sample. So here's a sample month. And I drew these out because I couldn't get, it was too, it's too late in the year to get the monthly inserts from Plotter. Um, but I wanted to try this out. And if I like this format, then I'll buy the 2024 ones for next year. Uh, because it's like, it's tomorrow is August. So planner season is nearly upon us anyway, which, you know, good timing me, way to go. So this is a sample. This is my October page. I'll bring that a little closer for you and hopefully the phone will focus on it. Maybe not. Um, so that's that. And then the other stuff that I have in here. So, you know, the rest of the, the year is in here. And then I've got, you know, next year's appointments that I can transfer into my next calendar. Some notes pages. I made, uh, I, I actually tore the center page, the center uh, sheet out of um, the traveler's notebook sticker book insert and cut it down and punched holes so I have a little sticker holder. Oh, no. Well, it wasn't holding that one very well. Anyway, little holder for sticky notes. Uh, it's challenging to find sticky notes and stuff that fits in this tiny grid. Um, but, you know, whatever. Um, it's a work in progress. And then back here is where I'm keeping my story ideas. So I still am using this. And it just, aside from the calendar, I'm still using this mostly as like an incubator for ideas. So they're all small ideas of like story elements or characters or stuff that might be cool to write one day, but I don't have time to work on them now because I have another, you know, a big work in progress. So I keep them here. And then, you know, when I'm ready to write a new story, I can go back and flip through and say, oh, this looked really cool. And maybe I'll use this element. And then I can sort of build a story from, from the scraps that are in here. So that's that. And so what am I doing with my traveler's notebook? I'm so glad you asked. I am now keeping all of my stuff from my writing work in progress in here. So this is the rewrite notes for Warfare. Um, I originally wrote Warfare as a trilogy. I finished it in 20... 18? 2019? I don't know, 2019, I think, but it was a trilogy. And then during the pandemic, I did not have the brain power to come up with new ideas because, you know, I just had a baby, new mom, new situation. Everybody's locked up at home. Uh, it was kind of awful. So I didn't have the brain power to come up with new ideas, but I thought, let me go back and edit some of my older ones. So I did that. I did that with Emmeline and I'm doing it with Warfare now. Uh, so this is my current work in progress. Warfare is what I'm working on. So this is 
like character character coloring sheets for skin hair eye color notes about like racial because they're, they're, it's a fantasy thing so there's birdkin and wear lynxes and dream eaters and all kinds of cool stuff calendar of of the book and what happens in the book stuff so uh fun fact warfare and emmeline take place in the same town emmeline is actually a year or two behind rowan one of the characters in in this book uh, so it all takes place in the same town. You will see repeat characters. Here's a sort of a, a mood board. Uh, well, not a mood board, but like a character sort of reference. Like, here's what I'm thinking. This is art that I commissioned. Um, these are just stuff that I found like on Pinterest or online. My character images have changed since this, but it's neat as a time capsule to kind of see like... Um, you know, where I was and, and even now, like even in the rewrite, things are evolving just elements of like pieces of the story locations um and then here's the map of the video game that the third part of the book takes place in and yes i drew this and another fun fact i found this map in the pattern of peeling paint at the side of a burger restaurant in my town <laughs> so there was there was a painted wall and the paint was peeling off of the wall and I just quickly sketched out the shape that the peeled paint had left behind. And this was back in like 2012 and it became, and then I used it in 2016 because you can see the date right there. Of course, it's not gonna focus, but anyway, 2016. Um, so this is the Warfare game map. And then um, in Scrivener, I color code. So I can tell at a glance who's in which scene so this is the color coding key songs for each character and then what's in here oh their warfare avatar in game when they when they it's sort of like world of warcraft but like better because world of warcraft is not as cool as it used to be but anyway so that's that's my rewrite and that's reference stuff so like i'm not going to i'm not going to think that somebody has if i can't remember what color eyes orally has i can go and say oh yeah here they are okay there we go so that's good as a reference this is my working working notebook so i will go scene to scene and say okay what's happening in this scene here here's all the stuff i need to do for writing the opening night bit and here's all the stuff i need to think about what should it be I have a lot of TBD stuff. I talk myself, well, I write myself through a lot of blocks and like questions. And so this is a real working, working notebook. This is my brain on paper in the moment. And then in here is my old trilogy notes. So there's like calendars in here that aren't relevant anymore. It used to take place over several, several years, but here's another Scrivener key. All kinds of stuff that's like not real, not relevant, names, questions about like who is this and did I ever name this and what are the races that are playable and not playable and here's like date stuff, main sequence points, like there's all kinds of, here's the original map. The other one was, uh, I took a photo and I printed it, but this is the OG watercolor map, which is a loved artifact, it's seen better days, but I'm trying to not keep you know ungluing it and moving it and then these are you know book two book three this is a bigger version of that art um and a story map of like you know just brain dumping this is another map where here's the here's the game map and then here's like the political <laughs> the politic the map of the politics within the game so like who's who's factioned against who and who's fighting what. And then back here, I keep my, um, I'm a plotter, I am not a pantser, so this is my plotting spreadsheet. And even though I felt really good about plotting and replotting, it still ends up a total mess because things change, you know, it's, it is what it is. You gotta roll with it. So all of my storytelling stuff for my current work in progress is now in here all together, because it used to be that that middle notebook was in there and then I had my monthly in the front and my weekly in the back and then I kept a separate little folder. I kept all the other stuff in here, so the other two notebooks and the um, spreadsheet and I just, I don't know, I just didn't need all the space that I was using in the traveler's notebook for the calendar so I thought 
you know, I'd try something else. So this is my system in the second half of this year. And if it continues to work, this is what I'll plan to use in 2024. So I'd love to hear about what you are using. And I hope you're having a great summer and a great year or a great winter if you're below the equator. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.